Greetings from the land of OP! I am Rob the OP Gamer and I am here with my server admin Xavier McMage and we are bringing you the first episode of a brand new series that I'm launching to go along as a supplemental series with my build spotlights and this is going to be called the surprise builds and the idea with this is it's just like the build spotlights where I go over an entire build start to finish and everything you can do with it and all the automation surrounding it but I'm not going to know ahead of time. I didn't plan this. This is going to be off the cuff. I asked a few different people if they could come up with a few ideas for me to run with for this surprise build thing. Hopefully shenanigans will ensue. And Xavier has a build in mind he's going to spring on me. And uh, hopefully we'll go from there. And uh, this one's not going to be streamed. But in the future you can watch these live on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash robtheopgamer. Same with YouTube if you want to catch old videos at youtube.com slash robtheopgamer. And you can always see when these get posted if you follow me on Facebook and Twitter at the exact same Rob the OP Gamer. So uh, with all undue further ado, say hi, Xavier. Hello. That's kind of like the bro fist bump when you do that. Yeah. It would be probably more manly if we like, punched each other or something. Grunted. All manly and punched a wall. Dude. Or each other in the arm, even though we're in creative mode and it doesn't hurt. Exactly. A little less manly. Minus two man points. Ah, eh, we'll do. We'll live. So what am I building? So right now, I'm thinking of a tale of arch nemeses, from one building game to another building game. In uh, a long, long time ago, there was this game called Sim City, and everybody hated that robot. The robot that just comes into your city, blows up your fire department, and sets everything on fire. Oh god, we talked about but this once. Oh god, I want... Exactly. What I want to see is a flying machine of death with lasers that lights things on fire. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. We... <laughs> Ah, you you uh you get my nerd jollies going. Did I ever tell you that? I'll respect that. Uh, yeah. No, no. Homework. I don't know how to respond to that. No. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. So, are you wanting to see? <laughs> my mind is reeling at this. Um, are we talking about an actual mining machine, or is this just for shits and giggles of seeing something shooting fire and lasers? Mostly for shits and giggles. This is not for actually gaining resources, it's mostly to destroy the world. So this is just for crazy... True business. robot okay. style. True robot style. A giant fucking... For anybody that doesn't know that might be watching, this is that giant... There's in SimCity 2000... Um, there was several natural disasters that could occur in your SimCity, and uh, one of them was the fires, and then there's an earthquake one, and there was a bunch of different ones, and similar to an old Godzilla one, which I think was an older version, but there was a space robot that would fly down. He was huge, and his whole purpose was to fly around your city and blow things up. So I guess that's what we're building. Um, my first thought is uh, my first thought is dispensers with IT and T in it. Yeah, that would work. We even have a village to test on over here. Yeah, we do. I noticed we that. We have our own little city. Mine City 2000. <laughs> Mine City 2000. So, um... Does TNT blow up on impact? Like, if it's launched? Not on impact. It, there's still a delay, but it'll blow up eventually. If you want something that blows up on impact, Alimentum would work. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I was thinking. Of, I was thinking of all things that blow up. Alimentum works. Um, fire charges look pretty, but I don't think they actually do anything. I'm not sure how to make it shoot lasers though. I guess we could get some turtles in there that just shoot lasers at various intervals. Yeah, that would work. Not sure if they can shoot directly down, but for 
going right down, we could use the Thomcraft uh, Arcane Boar. You're supposed to let me do this building ideas. <laughs> uh, I, I'm excited too. Okay. <laughs> Because I totally haven't been sitting on this since you asked me a while ago. Since I very first brought the idea of this series up? Exactly. And you almost spilled the beans the instant I asked you. I'm like, hey, do you have any uh, cool ideas? And you were like, yeah, this one idea that we were talking about the other day. And, oh, wait. <laughs> exactly. I think what we'll go with, obviously, is if it's going to have to move and fly around, we're going to go with frames. Um, obviously, we don't have red power too, but we could go with this. What was this? What was this red power mod called? Or this this stand in this frame stand in mod? Redstone in motion. Redstone in motion. And do they just add the frames, or do they add other stuff too? It's basically entirely the red power frames. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, we want to make this vaguely UFO shaped. Um, you know what we can do actually is, uh, he was a, um, what was, he was, he was a giant flying space creature. Yeah, it was like a big old space crab. Do we want to, um... Do we want him to look iron or look steel? Do you think steel would be more appropriate or iron? Maybe steel is more of a gray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, either steel or just go with some kind of black box. Cause I think it was just this big old black space crab. Well, the cool thing about red power and motion, or not red power, red, was it redstone or red power you said? Redstone. The cool thing about redstone in motion is I, I was reading on the wiki and you can make the frames look like certain things. If you craft it with something, like I just crafted just a frame with the seal block. And so you can't see anything as you place it, but if you close off the sides of it with the screwdriver, instead of looking like a uh, frame, it will look like the steel block if you close off the sides of it. Look at that. Snazzy. Did you know that? I bet you didn't know that. I bet you did know that, but you're supposed yeah. to pretend you didn't. That's awesome. I know, right? I was totally unawares. So doing this, um, when I say closed off, you can right-click on it with the screwdriver, which isn't hard to make. The uh, frames themselves here are just sticks, basically. You take five sticks in an X pattern to get the carriage cross piece, and then you take that carriage cross piece and surround it by sticks, to get the carriage panel, and then you put six carriage panels together to get the carriage framework, and then you take eight carriage frameworks and an orange die to get the actual frame carriage. Now that's just one of the frame types. There's actually uh, five frame types, and they all do different things, and to craft them, you do the exact same recipe except for with the, with the appropriate colored die. So the support carriage I just loaded, it's blue die, and each of the carriages do different things. This says carriage entire body of blocks isn't con it's connected to a uh, carry is a what carries entire body of blocks, meaning that supposedly you can uh, not have to have a block touching everything on the carriage. Like in previous Red Power versions, you had to have everything that was moving touching the, a frame, but I think with that one you can just like set them down, and as long as it's on, as long as a block it's touching is connected to a frame somewhere, it will still move. And then uh, you can make a cube to carry things with the yellow ones and carry straight lines of blocks with the green ones and entire exact pattern prepared with the purple ones. I haven't tested those too much yet because I tried at one point and it crashed the world. I'm not sure how stable they are. Or I'm sure they're stable. I'm sure I just did something wrong. But I haven't played with this mod too much yet. But I am familiar enough with basic framework. So we're going to go with that, I think. Sounds like a plan. So I think what I want to do is we'll just make this look like a space alien. We'll start out with start it along those lines. I'm thinking. Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to get the same scale as it was in SimCity because that was ridiculous. It was like four square city blocks. Yeah, that thing was gigantic. 
Also, the monster was pretty big. Also, the uh, natural disaster was huge. <laughs> Look at that. From from beneath, it kind of looks just like a like a like a steel huh. platform. Yeah. So. I want to give myself plenty of space for this, but I kind of want it to look vaguely UFO-ish. So I'm going to do something like this, I think. And the closing off the sides doesn't just make it look good. Uh, any side that's closed off will not be able to be manipulated by, or will not try to manipulate blocks around it. So if you play something against a closed face, it won't try to move the closed face or anything touching the closed face. So this could land on the ground and take off again and then it wouldn't touch anything uh -huh. on the bottom. And I am not very artistic, so this is probably going to look absolutely terrible. <laughs> so long as the testificates down there rue the day they encountered this, then it's alright. Okay. Although you'd think that they would know it was coming, because I'm doing it right in plain sight. You would also think that they'd prepare for a zombie invasion every night. That's a very valid point. <laughs> so we're just going to move around here, closing off the lower faces here, so it all looks like a nice seal block. We don't want this to look like a frame platform. The whole idea is to make this look like a uh, floating alien imposing ship of doom here. Huh. So we're just going to right click. Oh, I didn't do the screwdriver. Huh. The screwdriver is just a couple pieces of iron and a cobblestone into leather for the handle. So it's not that's not that hard to make either. So we're just going to get all these closed off. We're almost done here. And uh, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking dispensers and elementum for sure. Uh, does does the dispenser automatically ignite TNT when it's shot? I'm unfamiliar with that. I hope let's, it does. Let's see. Let's let's do a little mini test over here. So I loaded a few TNT in there. I'm just going to flip a lever and see what happens. Oh, God. <laughs> it Perfect. did not launch that at all. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I guess we're going to have to go with Elementum. Unless you just want to drop bombs directly beneath it. Oh, would it drop, do you think? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and set up another dispenser. was IT&T, and it just dropped the eye. Strange. Try regular TNT. Yeah, that first one was. Nice! <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Alright, so we'll get bombs dropping, and we'll get... Uh, Elementum flying. So the movement piece of this is going to be the carriage engine. There's actually two forms of engine for this mod. There's the engine and there's the motor. And the um, 
There's a carriage controller which interacts with computer craft control. And carriage translocator teleports the, lo the carriage to a remote position label. I'm not sure how that one works. I haven't tried to mess with that at all. I'm not familiar with it, so we're not going to do that in this run. Um, but the engine and the motor, what we're looking at, the engine moves the carriage but stays put. It doesn't go anywhere itself. So if it moves the carriage, then anything else would have to move it back into place. And then the uh, engine is what we're actually going to be using. This moves with the carriage. So if anybody's familiar with the old Red Power um, inchworm drive system using the motors, this is a lot more advanced. It just it moves with the carriage. So I'm going to load a couple buttons here. Might help if my mouse didn't derp. So I'm going to set this right in the center for the time being. We can always move that. But then you can take the buttons around the sides here like this. And then when you right-click it, you want to right-click one of the buttons for me there, Xavier? Can do. It will move the entire carriage and the motor with it. So you don't have to worry about the interim drive. So you can see Xavier just moves with the carriage. Carriage moves with him. These are really cool frames uh, because of the fact that they... It looks to me like, anyway, I don't know if they're actually coded this way or not, but it seems to me like they grab onto everything and pick them up and then place them back down in effect. Like, visually, graphically, they don't do anything, but you can see he just tossed down a, a green wool there and it moves with the carriage. Like, it holds onto it and I think functionally picks it up and push it, puts it back down, which I think is also why the... Uh, I think it's also why the um, mining walls and stuff work with them too, but I'll go over that in a different build. Mm. So, oh, yeah, it grabs onto entities. They can't move while the frame moves either. So if the frame can, if the frame gets stuck moving, it will get whatever entities are on it will get stuck as well. So uh, if you could, if you could uh, kindly decal the carriage. So from here, we're going to just make this look alien-like. Oh, thanks for the thanks for the assist. Now that I'm almost done with them. I figured I'd uh, not be a complete bump on the log. Well, you're here to make fun of me and to tell me how to, what I'm doing, so I didn't actually expect you to do much. This looks pretty good. Looks like that spidery UFO guy. I know that he has, like, red eyes and shit, so maybe that's, uh... Oh, you know what? Here we go. I got this. <laughs> when in doubt, red wool. Well, he looks a little—he looks a little too happy because the bottom rung sort of looks like a mouth, though. Let's 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 move those down one, I think. Does that look a little, a little better at all? A little. I have an idea how to make it look angrier. But now he just looks like he has a giant nose. How are you going to make him look angry? Using, uh, if you put the wool blocks back up there, we can put some of the forge micro blocks that are like black for like an angry eyebrow over top of it. Which ones? Let's go with, say, black wool columns. Or pillars. Should be able to find them in Creative Plus. I'm not finding them, just looking them up. Check and see if they're uh, turned off them. in your NEI filter. I can find them in NEI though. Like that? And then maybe put another one above here or something. It's a little angrier. <laughs> it looks a tad silly with the orange showing, though. What 
if I did this. You could use... Yeah. There we go. And then if you want to cover this stuff, the orange frames here, you could use, say, steel block panels. Or column panel or something like that. Not used to playing with micro blocks again. I don't know their names. Yeah, me either. Um, is there a half block cover? See also LRM rant. What were you referring to exactly? The uh, post pillar. I'm thinking post, maybe pillar. Or maybe the strip, even. One of those will work. I'm happy with that. <laughs> you happy with that? I like that. I'm happy with that. Alright, so now to make, make him actually functional in shooting stuff. Uh, for the end, for the, we need to add one more engine in here, I think, and I'm going to put it, uh, hmm, let's move this guy, I think. And then we need another one for moving up and down. Excellent. Yeah, one problem. What? Uh -oh. His face opened up. How'd that happen? Oh, it's not connected to anything in there. No worries. So that should be good now. So we got his uh, ingredients and his motion going. Now we need a couple of dispensers. So I'm thinking for the alimentum we should have them... Well, they should probably be somewhere that they can you can reach from inside since we're shooting these out. So I'm going to go with there and there on any side. Probably not this side, though, because that's where the... Well, that'll... Uh, damn it. So we'll get these, we'll get these put around each side, and then we can load them up with elementum. Yes. Yes. Control clicking isn't putting in a lot of these, so I'm just going to use any eye. So the dispensers are a vanilla item, and they're just made with a bow and a redstone and seven cobblestone. The elementum, though, is a thomcraft item. And I can't really show how it's made because this is a brand new test world and I haven't researched it. So, um, but it's a Thomcraft explosive item, and it's used making it's used in a crucible using gunpowder and a few other things. You want to talk a little bit about Thomcraft for me while I fill these up? Yeah, I fired up the Thomonomicon cheat sheet, so. I can tell you exactly how it's made. Oh yeah. 
Cheat cheat! Is it a, it's an alchemy thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's in alchemy. It's off of the crucible. That's right. This should be one of the first things that you end up researching. Yep. And it's pretty simple. You just need to get a little bit of a few basic essences in there. Potentia, Perdito, and Ignis, and then you throw in a catalyst, which is either coal or charcoal, and you get one elementum. If you don't want to destroy everything with elementum, you can also use it as a pretty decent fuel, which burns for a moderately better amount than coal. Can it be used in anything that coal can be used in? Yes. It is considered a solid fuel. It's also a destructible explosive. Whee! Although it won't blow up stuff with any kind of blast resistance of any kind, will it? Like even like even stone, it won't blow up? Yeah. It's really only good for blowing up soft materials. So if you're trying to blow up cobblestone with it, it'll take a while. I won't hold my breath while you try and blow things up with cobblestone. Blow up cobblestone with it. And by hold your breath, you mean walk away and not pay attention? Pretty much. Go make a sandwich, come back. <laughs> ah, nice. So the frames on, the so on either side of the dispenser should hold onto the dispensers. And then the um, frames inside behind the dispensers will hold onto the buttons. So those should all be good. So we've got a frame in every side there. And then we got the engines, and these buttons aren't even interfering with these engines because they're not in the same place, so that's good too. Now we'll do, I think we'll put a dispenser downwards and we'll load it with some, uh, some TNT. Huh. You know I'm building this for you, right? <laughs> oh yes. I think we'll move this engine, because I think we're going to want access to this uh, TNT thing here. I'm totally going to stand back while you play with this baby. And, um... Move these engines, I think. We'll do like this. That should be good. So this, we're setting this up. This uh, the bottom floor, the floor, the bottom floor, the frame here will hold onto the dispenser, and this will hold onto that button, which will launch that dispenser. I gave you two new engines. I like how the buttons are now multi parts, so I can put two buttons in the same square like this. I don't know if you're. Oh yeah, you can see it right there. See that? Look at that. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's one of the, my favorite parts about the new multi part thing is actually having things like buttons, torches, all multiples in the same square. Yep. Although it just occurred to me this isn't going to work anyway, because you have two ways to go forward and no way to go back. So let's move these... Hmm. I like how I, I destroyed that and then moved, moved it back. <laughs> How's that? Does that look kind of... It's a little clunky in here. But you're not going to be moving while you're destroying things. Exactly. This should work. Do you want elements and dispensers facing downwards too? Because when you when you throw that switch, did you see how far that one that I switched earlier went? Yeah. It had some pretty good distance on it. Let's get a few that go downwards too. We can put them like right here. I'm thinking. Okay. And the 
cool thing about this is that you can use the same button to switch both these dispensers. Like from inside. Mm -hmm. And I think all the frames are still connected everywhere. We might need to... No, that should be good. You want to try to move this thing for me? I'm going to watch outside. All right. Make sure all the frames are still connected. Did not look like it moved. No, it didn't. So something's not connected, maybe? Yeah. Check the eyebrows. Can't remember if they were connected or not. No, they are. All the dispensers are connected to frames out here, and all the frames in here are connected. Maybe it's here? Hang on, let me put put a few extra frames. In. Oh, wait, it's right there, I think. I missed that one right there. Uh, try again. Nope, still nothing. Hmm. I might do a slight YouTube cut while we figure out why the frame's not moving. Alright guys, we're back, and we got this thing moving, finally. We took a lot of moving around, trying to figure out exactly what was wrong, but uh, we're still not exactly sure. We got Xavier for helping me fill up some of the uh, dispensers with Elementum, but um, I changed these two blocks right here, so instead of being wool, you can see I've got some crafted frames with red wool, so these are actually frames right here. So that helps to hang on to things a little bit. And it also helps with the inside because it doesn't look, you've got a little bit more of a clear shot looking outside because you can see, you can see the, the through the frames, even if they're covered on the outside, you can still see through them outwards. So that kind of helps. Um, we never did figure out what was wrong with why the frame wouldn't move forwards. It was moving all directions but forwards. And finally we ended up having to mimic the back wall exactly before it would actually agree. So even without this block here, it won't move with this frame. See, look, if we click this, it'll move. But if we put the frame directly underneath of it, like this, it won't move. Not exactly sure why it's doing that, but if we just move the frame forward, it moves. So we're going to have to go with that. Um, it's just a little derpy. So pr play with your frames if you get in the point where the um, machine is stuck and you can't move exactly. Just play with your frames a little bit. But this should be good. Uh, Xavier, you'll move with the back engine completely except for forwards, which is the front engine. Does that work for you? <laughs> Front engine goes forward. Makes sense. All right, and you got all the bottom bombs. Yep, you got some elementum in every one of these. Last touch I wanted to yep. do was lasers in some fashion. So um, my first thought would be laser turtles, but that would require a lot of expensive crafting if people actually did that. But then I guess so would Thongcraft research with the uh, with the arcane boar, but that would need a lot of space that we don't have in the bottom, especially with that one distributing TNT in there. What else makes lasers? All right, YouTube's, we are back. And I just had to get my cert, my client relaunched again, but we are back and ready to go. Um, the only other thing that we can think to do would be to actually install actual laser drilling techniques like the Arcane Bore or the Mine Factory Reloaded Laser Drill, but that would take a lot of space and a lot of reworking of this entire platform, and um, as far as the design itself goes, we have to widen it out, and I'm actually running short on time right at the moment. I need to go be heading out the door pretty quick here, so we don't really have time to do that. Uh, Xavier said that he'd be cool with revisiting this concept at a later point, though, if we get enough requests. So any of you YouTubers out there that want to see this happen again, let us know. Leave a comment below if you want to see this bigger and with actual drilling lasers. Uh, at that point, though, we'd be getting more into a mining platform, but hey, whatever's good. So I think at this point, we're pretty much as ready for you to play with your toy. What do you think? I'm ready to blow up a village.
Go for it. I'm just going to flow back and watch. My work here is done. Oh, that looks awesome anyway. Oh, I am not disappointed with how awesome that was anyways. <laughs> oh, the TNT. Awesome. I am not getting game sounds for for some reason though. Hang on a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna just do one more quick little thing to get my sound going here. There we go. There's the sound. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Wreck that town. Yes. Here is your Sim City. Exploding robot. Here is your natural disaster of doom. Watch as the citizens flee in terror. Partially from that zombie in gold armor. But also because of your mighty natural destruction of your giant space robot of doom. Eat this. Oh, dude. Dude, what What about pyrothium florbs? Oh, florbs. Yes. I'm, what, okay, what I need you to do right now is I need you to take some of the stuff out of one of those dispensers and put florbs in. That's that's what needs to happen right now. So for those of you who for those of you who don't know, florbs are from uh, thermal expansion, and you can put various liquids in them. So here's resonant ender, here's destabilized redstone. Um, Here's Energized Glowstone, and these act like thrown items, like the empty one doesn't do anything if you see if I right-click, but if you press R on the, uh, to see the recipe on it, you can see you take a slime ball and a sawdust and a slag, which you get out of induction smelting, and various recipes of induction smelting. And do you, do you use the, um... You use the, the uh, liquid transposer to get them in there, don't you? Or the fluid transposer? Saber? I believe so, yeah. So you can put pretty much any kind of liquid in these. Like, here's a resonant ender one. If I throw this down, you can just throw it. And you can see that it hit. And it pulls out the liquid. It's, it, it, it lets go of its liquid on impact. And resonant ender frame one isn't no teleports you. Or it's supposed to, but I didn't for some reason. Maybe it's not working exactly. And the redstone one will do the exact same thing. There's uh, destabilized redstone. Here's an energized glowstone one. If it hits, I'm not sure why it's not actually. Is it because of the grass? Is the grass catching it or something? Yeah, the grass is catching it. But see, the glowstone goes upwards, obviously. So there's all kinds of florbs. They're for thrown liquid. Uh, one of the most dangerous substances is uh, blazing pyrothium, which eats through pretty much any substance. It's very dangerous. It does lots of damage. So, uh, I'm wondering if the dispenser can launch those. Alright, let's see it. I mixed in Elementum with the Lorbs. Oh. <laughs> so we're just waiting for it to come out? If you know what I mean? It should have fired. I didn't see anything. It was consuming some of them. Now the one on the right here has... Didn't actually use it yet. Hmm. We might need the autonomous activator. The autonomous activator, for those of you who don't know, is also from Thermal Expansion, and it, it right-clicks whatever it has in its inventory. So, uh, let's try this. Oh my god, it's just doing it! Ah, change it! <laughs> oh my god, it just started launching those. That is funny. Did you get a button on it? Uh, not yet. There we go. <laughs> oh, the pyrothium is just so dangerous. Liquid-wise, it acts like lava, but look, it just sets it sets everything on fire. But look, it melted. All that dirt is gone. 
all those trees are just melting through, it melts through the sand, it eats away everything. It's like lava acid. Nice! Although it's hit the same spot, so it's consuming its own, the, the extra forbs that come out, it kind of consumes them, so you kind of have to be careful with the targeting. But still, that is just nasty. Oh, that is so nasty. <laughs> Badass! Oh, I love it. Oh, that looks so awesome. Back to our regularly scheduled destruction. Yes. So, Xavier, are you happy with your uh, robot from SimCity 2000? Who couldn't be happier with a flying machine of death and destruction? <laughs> uh, so I would consider this a successful build, wouldn't you? Build success. I like it. Well, I think we're going to want to call that here. I am about out of time. I need to get running here. But, uh, yeah, build success. Let's pose in the front of it for the end of this. There we go. And I have been Rob the OP Gamer, and I was here with my friend Xavier McMage. Take a screenshot of this, put it as your desktop, absorb, bask in the glow of the uh, great destruction of our first ever surprise build spotlight, surprise builds, and uh, don't forget you can check it all out on my, op you can check out all of my OP gaming live on my stream at twitch.tv slash robtheopgamer, as well as on YouTube at robtheopgamer, and see when I post these videos up by following me on Facebook and Twitter at Rob the OP Gamer. Hope you all had an OP time. Catch you later. Say bye. Bye.